It's that time of year again where the army announces they've missed their recruitment goals once again. But this time, it's so bad, we have less soldiers in today's army than we did before entering World War II, so it's actually really bad. But in a shocking turn of events, army missing goal again, army announces sweeping recruiting reforms, which means the army has finally admitted they are not good at recruiting and they need to change something, but if I'm gonna be honest with you, they might be a little too late. Now, a little known fact about me, I actually had the honor and privilege of working with the U.S. Army and helping with their recruitment up in Indiana. And pretty much what I did was I went on a mini tour, I went to different schools, and I actually did some public speaking uh, for some of the high schoolers who are going to graduate. Now, I got to be embedded with recruiters, I got to see what the biggest issue was, I've talked to the commanders, first sergeant, and quite honestly, the issues are very difficult to tackle. So we're going to go through all this, we're going to see if the reforms are actually going to make a change or if the US Army is going to continue to go on a downward slope. Now let's go ahead and run through what the issues are for the US Army with recruiting. One of the number one biggest issues is that there's no current conflict right now. Why would I join the army if I'm not going to deploy? I'm going to sit there and you're telling me I'm serving my country? You have to understand the army also sort of created this own issue. In the last 20 years, being in a real war with Afghanistan or being in a war with Iraq, whatever you want to call it, we were calling it a war, um, the U.S. Army said that's how you serve your country. You deploy overseas, you come back, and you've served your country. You're not going to feel like you're serving your country when you're sitting around uh, Fort Campbell or Fort whatever, and you're twiddling your thumbs hoping you get some sort of deployment and you don't have to be embarrassed because you didn't deploy because you feel like well I didn't serve my country you would be very shocked by the amount of young adults or recruits who want to join the army who actually have a bit of patriotism in them and actually feel like they want to serve their country it's not all about money and free education but that's our next point Let's be honest, one of the biggest main reasons why anyone joins the military, let alone the army, is for the free college or those perks and benefits. And the thing is this, the job market has almost surpassed, if not met, these same standards as the U.S. Army. Right now, not knocking on McDonald's, because if you work at McDonald's, lucky you, you can work at McDonald's and get tuition assistance. You can work at almost any job, not any job, but a lot of jobs that you wouldn't assume where you get some good benefits, you can get as good as benefits of the U.S. Army. So why would I join the Army again to not deploy, to sit around and get yelled at when I can just work out of McDonald's and get tuition assistance? And again, please stick with me. We are going to go to what the reforms are, but we first need to tackle what the actual issues are, and then we'll see if the reforms are really going to tackle the issues. And the next one, I'm going to completely call these guys out because nobody knows who they are, but they have a lot of influence, a lot of power and money when it comes to Army recruitment. Army Enterprise Marketing Office is trash. These are the guys who create the posters. These are the guys who fund like these random marketing campaigns. And if you'll notice, they're just bad. They're nowhere to be seen because they're reaching the wrong demographic. Here's something I'll call them out for. They decided, oh, we're going to allocate millions of dollars to sponsor a wide range of esports tournaments Call of Duty streamers, like, what are you doing? I get younger kids play video games, but it doesn't mean that their whole lives are tied up in video games. These are not, like, dumb kids who think, oh my gosh, the army loves video games, I love video games, I'm gonna join the army. But nonetheless, the marketing team for the army right now is just completely terrible, but I'm glad they actually get called out in these reforms, and we'll get to that in a bit, but you gotta understand, these guys have a lot of power and influence, and nobody even knows they exist. Another massive one no one talks about, and this was a really big issue when I was working with the U.S. Army recruiters, is that all of the branches, and even within the branches, they are all competing amongst one another. So imagine you are a recruitment office with all of the military branches in a small area. Like, you're not near a metropolitan area, you're in, like... Uh, the suburbs, maybe a little bit of the country. Now all of these branches are trying to pick away at some of the recruits in the area or potential candidates. And not only that, you also have National Guard components, reserve components who are fighting in etern internally within the Army. So there were times where a recruit got lied to by the National Guard and then the active duty recruits were like, whoa, 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 this is a lie, come back. But then National Guard would say, no, it's not a lie, come back to us. It happens all the time throughout the country. And this one is massive. 
kids just are not meeting the physical requirements or not meeting the basic standards of joining the U.S. Army. I mean, I was actually shocked by the amount of kids who are like, hey, um, when is my drug test because blah, blah, blah. Or kids just can't meet the basic physical needs to join or can't pass their testing. Again, I was completely shocked because I was the most normal fat kid ever who joined the army. I was hardly in shape. My two mile time is so embarrassing. I could barely do push ups. Nonetheless, though, when you go into the army, you know, they do make you stronger. In fact, the army does have a preparatory course with great success. I do agree with that program, but I digress. Um, as far as kids actually being motivated to join the army, it's just not there. All right, so let's go ahead and see what these reforms are. And like I had mentioned, um, the Army has less active duty soldiers today than they did before World War II. Here's the actual number. Um, 485,000 in late 2021 to around 452,000 today. It's the smallest full-time force since 1940, which is not good. But again, we do have more technology, but nonetheless, it's still not a lot. So let's go ahead and see. These right here are the reforms. So we'll start with this. Establishing a new specialized enlisted and warrant officer recruiting career fields that will replace the existing 79R MOS and eventually abolish involuntary recruitment assignments, which means, okay, you get to pick where you want to go, which is a good thing. This next one is also a good thing, and like we had mentioned, you can go to a lot of fast food chains and get and get uh, tuition assistance. Formally increasing recruiters' mandate to woo prospect soldiers with college education due to the shrinking propor uh, proportion of workforce members who have only a high school education. Uh, creating an experimentation directorate within the recruitment command that is isolated from current year production pressure, uh, which means you need to stop hating on recruiters for not getting the job done because recruiters can only do so much. Again, when you have those marketing people who have zero oversight and can do whatever they want, they have zero pressure. I think they're the ones who need to have a little more pressure on them and ask them, why are the numbers not correlating with all the money we're giving you? This one's important, integrating effective data analysis to support recruiting policy decisions after the study group found the series has failed to verify whether historical changes were effective. I mean, you would assume the U.S. Army is looking at data, looking at everything to say, hey, this worked here, let's keep doing this, not just keep making changes and not verifying the data. Reassigning recruitment command to report directly to Warmoth and raising its commanding general rank to three-star level and extending the command tour length to four years. Now, I don't know what this does necessarily for the recruits themselves, but for the overall command structure, it looks like they want to extend the officer rank and to make this job um, wider and broader to get more faces involved with recruitment. And then the last one, and again, no one ever talks about them, but I might do a deep dive on these guys, how they just get away with everything. Um, reassigning the Army Enterprise Marketing Office to report to re recruiting command, which is good. Again, these guys have almost zero oversight. You have offices all over the world where they will just give you some money or have some sort of budget and just check off what they have to do. They could care less if anyone joins the army. They are here just to slap the army on NASCAR, slap the army at your local fair because, look, they have a budget. They got to spend the budget because if they don't spend the budget, they're not going to get that money back. But again, this is a good one. Now they have to di uh, report directly to recruitment command, and I hope they put more pressure on these guys if they don't get the job done and the numbers are not correlating and we're not all working together people need to be fired and we need to start evolving this program now hold on i know a lot of you are saying you missed the most obvious problem here and the most obvious problem is there is a massive lack and i mean a massive lack of trust for recruiters not only army recruiters but recruiters we have things like TikTok, YouTube, and I'll even say myself, I've talked a little bit of trash of recruitment. I was surprised the U.S. Army even brought me on board. But nonetheless, here's what I found out, and I'm not tooting my own horn. This is what the U.S. Army even told me. Uh, the kids, when I say the kids, the high school students, they were more receptive to someone like me who is out of the army. Um, I have a bachelor's degree. I have another, I have an associate's degree in medical science and I'm going to get my master's degree. I bought a house through my VA loan. You have to understand you get a lot of great perks and you have a lot of success outside of the military if you do things right. I'm not like a, success, a successful guy, but I'm using my benefits to my advantage. However, what recruiters do is you get this, you get that, you get this, but you're sitting there like, well, if you get this and get that, why are you still in the army? You see what I'm saying? So there, there is a massive lack of trust or understanding for the recruiter 
And I wish the U.S. Army would bring more people like myself who have these regular stores. I'm just a regular old guy who did the Army for one contract. I have education benefits. I have all these benefits. But when the recruiter is telling you that, do you really trust them? Because if you get all these great benefits, you, th you would think you'd get out. Again, you need to bring civilians in. Just regular old people are like, yeah, my life is okay. It's pretty comfortable because I did this one contract this one time. Now, here's the part where the army finally said, you know what? We screwed up. We need to make some reforms. We're not doing the best we could be doing. Warmoth and George said the army has failed to keep up with trends in the U.S. labor market in recent decades. That's why I said at the beginning of the video, we might be a little too late. And recent high profile failures to meet accession goals where the a culmination of long term trend. The army has not met its contract goals since 2014 which is insane because I enlisted in 2013, <laughs> so wow, which has slowly drained its pool of delayed entry recruits who are awaiting training and forced it to rely on late year recruiting surges fueled by recruiting willpower rather than effective and efficient practices, which pretty much means, and again, if anyone knows recruiters, these guys all have bags under their eyes because they're always tired. They're always pushing and pushing to try meeting these goals. And you get hated on. I mean, there's a lot of pressure to not be last. The very interesting thing about recruitment, which is not normal in the U.S. Army, is that you can see in real time how you're performing. Like for me, I was a combat engineer. Um, our sister company, Alpha Company, we never really knew how they were doing. We didn't know if they were good or bad. We just always wanted to be better than them, and we always thought we were better than them. But now imagine this. Bravo Company has 10 points. Alpha Company has 22 points. We're not actually better than them. That's how it works in recruitment. For every person you recruit, that number is shown throughout the entire brigade, so everyone can see who's doing good and who's doing bad. And that's why a lot of recruiters were doing whatever it takes, whether in bad faith or bad practice, maybe lying to people. It doesn't matter. It's more important I get that recruit in, possibly ruin his life, who knows, maybe make it better, but it doesn't matter because I got my numbers up, I helped my team up, and we're not going to get yelled at. And the U.S. Army, it looks like they're admitting we do need to get away from that. And it's not all bad news. Like you can see here, the Future Soldier Prep Course. This was sort of hated on, but I actually really like this. It was a prep course to get into actual basic training, where I believe if it was like 90 days or 60 days or something like that, where you work on your test scores, you work on your physical fitness. And I don't know why people were upset about that, because a lot of people who go into basic training already are wasting their time and are not even good enough to be there. Why not do the prep course, then go to basic training, then go to your real unit? Because just like any other other job out there you do have prep courses to get ready for work now I know a lot of people will say well that's what basic training is it's the prep course for the army but not really because basic training at least when I was in and it wasn't even that bad um, for a lot of soldiers it's really hard on their hips hard on their joints and they're actually not ready to wear that full kit because if anyone's never wore full kit with the helmet um, the straps and everything it feels a lot more different than just putting on a heavy backpack so this prep course was actually rather successful so there are some good things coming out of the recruitment command so yeah that's currently what's going on with the u.s army i am happy that they finally announced some reforms and they finally said you know we don't actually know what we're doing and we're publicly going to state it we're going to be transparent and let everyone know here's what the issue is please understand i am not hating on the army and i'm really not even hating on that marketing office but nobody knows who they are i'm actually shocked they brought them up in the reforms anyway that's what's happening let me know what you guys think leave your comments and opinions down below and we'll see you later